Okay, hi. Um, And show invitation we sent out that lured you here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be tools color. And then when you're, and I have a real quick, slide. okay, I'm going to take type like I did here, and then this is when I, Bring it into, and then take it a little. Then I'm gonna you. And here's some basic shapes that I was playing around. More shade, not crazy in Photoshop. Uh, I'm going to and uh, Here's the basic that into Photoshop to create different of going going a little bit further. You can, okay, then I'm also going to, in uh, in this, what do you, And then I brought it into full intense. Fight the color and took it even further. For those. Filters. And, you know. Certain, I brought it into to uh, Photoshop. Those different effects in color. in the background and the lines with another
then harmonic shapes just sorted even brought it into photoshop and of course I love to work take text create it and use it. so this is so it's just a quick preview so here I am in Illustrator I've got a brand new blank page and I want to show you this one right here is the shape builder tool and this is the pathfinder tool over here now the neat thing about the shape builder which is the new tool that is available to you in uh, Illustrator is that it really, really simple you have to go into shapes and select your rectangle your circle etc you can just work with a shape builder tool you can do a rough sketch oops that, that wasn't clear enough to, for illustrator yeah uh, really simple tablets that okay so then I'm selecting uh, the shapes you can still resize them move them around do what you want okay now I'm selecting shaper again and if you squiggle in here you squiggle in oops okay you see how I'm, you squiggle in that shape inside the shape the shape disappears if you squiggle on a line All right. So do you have any need for the path? Only works with shape. I still love Pathfinder a lot. Okay, now Pathfinder is, is, uh, where is it? I think I, oh, here it is. Okay, now the uh, path, well, I guess I could still use, uh, um, Shape Builder. Okay, now here, of course, you've got just both of them selected. And you can let me see if I can select the two. See how this one combines. Let me undo. That. I hate the fact that this takes up so much room. Um, now, another thing I forgot to tell you about Shape Builder is these shapes are editable. You see how you can move them around? So if you change your mind,
Cool, right? Whereas that doesn't happen with Pathfinder. This gives you a little bit more control. Yes. Just so, so that I can. Okay, uh, I ungrouped the whole so that I could add color to certain areas. I don't like the way. Because that part is empty, let me throw some color in the back. Well, let me see, hold on. See how it's okay, hold on. Okay, let me get rid of this. And of course, you can add not only color. You can add patterns. OK. Now this is just playing around with this. Okay, I'm going to select the whole thing. Oh, I've got something out here. Select. And then I'm going to give it an effect like drop shadow. Okay, you see, you see what dro uh, the drop shadow did. Of course, you can affect the shadow here. Yeah, and that's because I selected the mall. Okay, so I guess this one is a is a is white. So, uh, uh, let me check. Yeah, each one, you see how? So, you want to do what to the circle? Select the circle and maybe pull that to the top one. So, no. Oh, well, so you just leave. Color. In other words, you need to play in your work. Yeah. And I okay. Let me select it all and delete. And I'm gonna try something else. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the shape filter just because we easy to make the shape. You don't have to go into here. And this time I'm going to go for a complicated shape. Uh, 
Uh, okay, Pr previously I created a star that had a whole bunch of points. So if you want to control that, you click on your star, click the board. Oops, it's not working. I'm trying to get the... Click and drag. No, it's not working. Yeah, I'm trying to get to the properties. Yeah, it would give me the properties. All I had to do was uh, select the tool. It's not working. Maybe I should have used the mouse. Oh, well. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you how you can affect the number of points on the star. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what I was going to do with this. Of course, I'm aligning everything. So it's perfectly centered. Go back to the shaper tool. Delete that center star. It's gone. Now just to show you that it's really gone. I'm going to throw a drop shadow back there. And then I'm going to go to uh, 3D. Oh, I forgot to change the color. I hate the I hate it when it goes to black. So I'm going to change the color of the stroke. Go back to Effect, 3D, Extrude. And of course, here you can control the object in space. Now you can see. When I select an object, expand the appearance. And now I've just got the lines of the. And if you want to play with this, you can ungroup it, remove parts. Okay. Oh, and I want to show you something else about this tool. Select it all again. This time I'm good. I'm going to go with a different design. Give some color. Well, I didn't do what I want here. I'll switch it around. Now I'm trying to change the color of the stroke here. Yeah, there it goes. 
And I'm going to make that stroke thicker. Let me make this a different color just to make sure. Okay, back to the shape filter tool. And I'm going to scrub along the line, oops, of these of the star. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. There. Okay. Expand it. Ungroup it. Okay, now I'm going to do something else with that 3D tool. You can see, oops. Uh, you go into ACT, 3D. Extrude. Okay, so you don't do it from the tool. No, it's not in it's not on your okay now. Okay now, now you see how I should I want to change the cap that I'm using. See what it did there? Well, let me undo it. Oops. Okay, here's the effect 3D extrude. Okay, there's the I'm going to change the cap to hollow. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to expand. And I'm going to maybe not, not drop shadow, but this time I'm going to do an outer glow. Maybe red so you can really see it. Make it really opaque. When I don't know why it's not changing it here. Oh, there it goes. Make it solid 100%. OK. No, so, so far I've just been playing inside. So now let's play around with something else here. I'm going to delete that. Then I'm going to play around with creating a design. OK, so I've got this real simple shape in Illustrator. I'm going to go to Photoshop. 
create a new file. A huge size. And I'm also going to reduce. If you were working on something that was going to stay on the web and or print, uh, any recommendations on resolution? Well, I would start with a high resolution, just because you want your image sharp, okay. bright, clear. What is high resolution? Okay, okay. Uh, re uh, resolution is pixels within a square inch. Now, like you see right here, I have 200 pixels per square inch. Any image that you see on the internet is low res 72, 72 uh, pixels per inch. If you want, if you're creating a document that a commercial printer is going to do a poster for you, you're going to, you want to kick that up to higher resolution, at least 300%. If you're working on a billboard display, you want even higher than that, okay? Yes, I leave the color mode for RGB at this point because in Photoshop, all the effects and all the tools work best with RGB. Now, once you get your design exactly how you want it, no more edits, no more changes, at that point is when you change your color mode. If you're going to send it to a print shop, you're going to print a poster, they're going to want that in uh, CMYK. But you don't do it now because you limit your palette. You don't have the wide range of color that RGB does. Now, RGB is red, green, and, and blue, and that is colored light, which is what you see on your monitor. Your monitor is colored light. You take all the colors, all the colors of light, the red, the green, the blue, and you combine them, you get white. Now, when you're working with ink, the CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, when you combine all those, you get black. If you bet those four colors in different variations will give you the whole scheme of, of colors in your, in, your, uh, in your design. But since we're in Photoshop, we're at the starting point. We are going to stay with RGB. You can go to a higher resolution, but I'm going with, with 200 just so the file is not humongous because I'm just demonstrating to you, okay? So I'm going to go. Here's my Photoshop screen. Why can't I see it all? Now, I like to cut and paste because I, I don't like to have problems. So I'm going to cut, copy, and I'm going to paste it in as a smart object. Smart object? Oops. Hope it shows up. Oh, it's it's opening up libraries. It all automatically wants to do that before. It it just uh, I'm not really not sure what a smart object is. I just can you tell us? Well, a smart object in Photoshop is a special layer that uh, actually preserves the original. Like when you enter it like this. Without losing the sharp line. It will be re so it's almost like working with a vector in Photoshop. Okay, a vector is everything that we've created in Illustrator. If I come in real close, you see how those are real sharp lines. So it's essentially based on mathematical equations. We don't know that we know our secret. I don't know that. It comes in very sharp and crisp no matter what you 
exercise. Okay, now here, let me go ahead and save this. I'm going to export it as a JPEG. And I'm going to go ahead and make that JPEG RGB. So this is called New Presentation Design. That's my mouse. which I hate doing. Okay, this I just created a JPEG so I can show you the difference between Okay, I a JPEG. You see that line? So, and that's a really, it's not a sharp, when you brought in Illustrator as a smart object, which this is, uh, okay, here's Illustrator, I don't want to be here. Where's my Photoshop page? Okay, that same uh, graphic as a smart object in uh, Photoshop. Oops. Well, it's still showing us. So it's not actually a vector anymore. Inside the smart object are the vectors intact. So that's why you can scale it up. Okay. Uh, only if it's embedded or a link. Well, uh, if you place it uh, as a link, uh, uh, a link object, then if you change the original, it will change in here. If you embed it, you... Okay, so now I'm going to go to, I'm going to go ahead and maybe I'll add a new layer. And I'm going to call this one gradient. <clears throat> so I'm, a, I'm on the layer that I just created and I called it gradient. I'm going to select everything in that layer. Okay, here's my gradient, and of course I can make it just a simple gradient from left to right. You can make it a circle. These are all the effects that you can create with your gradient. I'm going to do each one so you can see. So I've got the first one selected. This is a gradient color I'm working with, and I'm stretching it across. OK? Now here, you can play around with it a lot. 
you see how depending how far away you you bring it in okay and now I'm going to switch to the different mode of gradient which is a radio see how you have a lot of control there here's another effect that you can get Okay, you see how I'm changing the uh, gradient modes up here? I'm using this star-like feature. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to layers. Okay, here I am with that gradient layer. Now I want to give it some effects. So I'm going to go into filter, filter gallery, gallery. And I think maybe I'll go with the stained glass. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to do that. Am I on the, oh yeah, I'm on the wrong layer. Yeah, I want to be on gradient. Now you notice it's only affecting. Now on that light intensity, because it was really bright, you can you can change the size of your of your cell. Okay. Now I still want to do more to this layer. I've got texture in there. But I also want to, oops, I hadn't saved it, sorry. I like to save things, otherwise those, the temporary file gets really big, and that's what causes your system to crash. Okay, so I'm now I'm still on that gradient layer. I'm going to go into image. Adjustments, you can get level, curves, exposure, vibrance. You can see all these things you can do to that layer. I'm going to go with rinse. And notice how the color really intensifies. Get it, play around with it until you get it just right, the way you like it. Say yes. Okay, I'm still not happy with this layer. I'm going to give it another filter. I'm going to go, let me see. I guess I'll go with film, film gray. Now, of course, you can see the gray. And, of course, you can control that. Okay. Okay, now I'll see. Go to the smart object. Now let me see if this will work. You see how I selected the area within the smart object using my little magic wand? Did you have to be on that layer first? Yes, you have to be on the layer. Here's the, you notice I'm on the smart object layer. And I, I selected the space within this, the object. And let's give it white. Let's see, did the white get selected? Where 
towards me. Oh, fuck it. Okay, I've got that white there. What did that mean about rasterize? It, it changed it uh, from a from a vector to a bitmap, right? Is that? It's no longer a smart object now. I think. Okay, so now here's where I get into. Remember, I said I like to use uh, uh, eye candy a lot, which is a plugin that I bought, which is uh, it's ninety bucks, but. I use it a lot, so it's really worth the money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into eye candy. Is that white area masked? Or is it no, deleted? no. I filled it with white. Okay. And the reason I did that is because I want to do something with it in eye candy special effects, <clears throat> which is... Maybe I'll give it an animal fur. You see down here where the effects change down here? A puma is a, is a, yeah, see, pole is a, a, like a baby horse and of course like I'm gonna go with a tiger I'm gonna go with a Bengal you can still control within here the amount of hair how long it is how short it is how wavy it is how stiff the direction of the light Okay, now I'm going to cancel that and go into something else. What was that that you were doing, like those options for the, for the carpet? For the what? For the hair. Oh, it's one of the options of, uh, of the fur texture. Yeah. Now, yeah, it's not, it's not in Photoshop. I bought this one. I paid ninety dollars for it, but it was worth every penny. And of course, you can see that you've got all these effects you can create. See? Uh, it probably is compatible with others. Okay. And of course, here you can affect. All kinds of effects that you can you can change the. The gradient smoothness. Okay, I'm gonna say OK. Okay, and that's just, uh, you can see how you can really spend a lot of time uh, getting different effects, different colors, different gradients. I like to create several versions. You know, I'll, uh, if I like a certain style, I'll save it with a new name and then continue experimenting so that I'll have four or five options to choose from. That was the effect from uh, from uh, from eye candy. Okay. Uh, what, what is it called? Well, the company that makes it is called A. It's alien. Uses I well, I got it when it was bucks. 
<laughs> okay. I mean, uh, is there a name for what the name of the effect that water uh, it was called uh, Corona. Uh, it, you know, like, uh, okay, let me try it again. You see how it's called Corona? And you, you see down here how I, it changed colors? Uh -huh. well, what I'm seeing is something like that. No, it's it's not animated at all. It's not? No. It's not a yeah. They be come in really close. Oh, that, that the is the oh yeah, the selection here. Yeah, let me deselect it so you can see how. And then I'm gonna go back and it's selected again. And maybe I'll. Okay. Oh, that was the screen just changing. I think they changed that. That screen is just changing color. Yeah. Okay. Now that's just playing around with these shapes. And uh, okay. So you can see how there's lots of possibilities. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my. Uh, what am I going to show you next? Of course, I was showing you. Basic shapes is what we just played with using Pathfinder and Shaper. And of course, this shows you I spent a lot of time playing with a whole bunch of effects. The lightning one was also from my candy. Okay. Now, I'm going to play with text now. Clicking with that. Select all of this. Delete it. Okay. Now I'm going to I just typed in my, my name and I'm going to make it very big. And I'm going to give it a fancy. Excuse me? Is it It's not a frame, it's just that it's selected. Uh, <clears throat> now, the text is text right now. But I'm going to it, and I'm going to convert it to outline. You see how I did that? Okay, now it's no longer text. So I'm going to go ahead and change it.
I'm resizing it, really playing around with it. Okay, now I'm going to go with a basic, well, I guess I could use Shape Builder, which just gives me that. Uh, it doesn't like my drawing. Okay. Yeah, it's too wiggly for, for Illustrator. <laughs> so I'm going to go in there and give that a different color. As you can see, it only gave the outline, but I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to send that to the back. Ooh, what happened to my eye? It disappeared. Oh, let me try that again. No, I guess what I did is I accidentally deleted a section of the word when I created. But let me go ahead and give myself a. Yeah, the shape tool, shape tool, shape tool grabbed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now I'm here again. I'm text right. I'm I'm still text. I'm gonna convert it to an outline. We can do all kinds of stretchy things to it. And all of the text in Illustrator is vector based. Is that correct? Yes. And that's why I love. To use those you're seeing here. If you wanted to take a character, a text character, and add a plot to it, would you do that in like some variation of the font? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, well, you would use a uh, glyph. Uh, let me show you. Like right here, uh, it's I can no longer do it because now it's an outline. But if I uh, type it again, I'm still in a text mode. I put my cursor in front of the V. I go to type glyphs. And here's different versions. Well, maybe this is not a very good example. Let me change. Well, that's, that's a good example. We need international characters. Yeah, you can do it in glyphs. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and change it to a Maybe a script. Uh, I'm just going to, okay, I'm going to stay with brush. Okay. And I've got my cursor in front of the V. I'm going to go to type, glyphs, and okay, here's the, well, well, I can go with, uh, no, that didn't work. Okay, now, first I'm going to remind you what that V looks like right here. Well, just well, I'm looking for another. No, well, on the original illustration. It doesn't have to be on the V. But if you select the V, you can see the ultimate for the selected text. Yeah. 
had nothing. Well, I guess the reason why is because there's no alternates. As you can see, there's only one V. Where this, this one very different. Yeah, it looks exactly the same. So what font did you say I should go for? Adobe Castellan Pro. I was down, it's down there a little ways. It's down in the C's. C-A-S. There. Second from the top, there it is. Regular? Sure. OK. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I don't see any V's that are very different. It doesn't look very different, does it? I don't see any too many alternates. You know, on, the, on the first row, on the, uh, when the very first row there, and you, like if you're on one, two, three, they have all the arrows. Are those clickable? Yeah, so that, that should all be numbered. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Go for the A. Yeah. Do your spell. So if you add a percentage, will that show up in HTML or only in graphics? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think many times I've you notice on place into an outline. Uh, a text for the website. Since it won't let me mess with the letters, so let me go ahead and pick another one. And see, there's the there's the glyph we just added. And of course, I'm going to change that into an outline. And I'm going to ungroup it. Get rid of my letters. Group the, the design. Now, this is uh, when I was showing you. No. when I was showing you the glyphs. That's how I got to the drop and the yin-yang sign was uh, using the glyphs that were available in uh, This thing won't let me go to the, very here at the bottom, where I can't get to, mm -hmm. there's a section that lets you change the font. Yeah. 
it can't because of because of the screen thing. It doesn't let me uh, give me access to everything on my page, which normally I would be able to do that. Maybe if I change it. <coughs> Maybe if I change the font here. <coughs> to West. OK. Now I'm going to go in there and see all the glyphs that are available under that font. I don't see the the yin yang or the drop, but it was in one of these. So let me go ahead and pick something weird like the spider web. Okay. Okay, now you can see it's still text or a font. Converting it to outline, enlarging it. I'm going to give you it. See, I'm going to go make this a large thumbnail. I've got the spider web selected. You see that I gave it. Okay. Okay, I've got the acorn selected. Now this is the patterns. Now uh, if you go if you go through your patterns, you can see uh, all the ones that are available to you. Did you make that an outline? It's an outline. You can give it a, a, a weird design if I want to. But if you One here at the bottom. Okay, so here, let me go ahead. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to go back to what I was doing with the type. Make sure everything's aligned. I'm going to go to Pathfinder. I don't like that yellow. Yeah, this is Pathfinder right here. Here's your tools. Where you remember, there are the two tools that you use to work with shapes. So what I did here is. I use Pathfinder to cut out the letters from the, from the box. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a drop shadow so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay.
Again, I'm coming close. So you see the drop shadow in the back that shows you that the letters are cut out? OK. Now I've got the box selected. And I'm going to I'm going to go to patterns. Wow, was Okay. Now you notice that we selected all the shapes within the pattern are giving me a drop shadow. Can you see that? I got rid of the drop. There's other ways to do it, just one. And there, I, I did drop shadow. That's how I got to where is that text I was talking about? No. That's how I got to this design. I gave it and I'm going to do that now. So I've got this, select this. Let me go to this new file, and I'm going to get rid of everything. Okay, there's my the design I've been playing with. I'm going to go to the background layer. Oh, got to deselect this thing. Let it save. Go to the background layer. I'm going to go for dark. Dark green. Okay, can you see how that dramatically changed that plain old effect? Okay. Here in, I'm back in Illustrator. Uh, I kind of don't like the way the, the letters disappear. So I'm going to give the, the outline a color. Can you see it now? Maybe make that stroke a little thicker. There you go. OK. OK. Okay. 
Now, the next thing I was going to show you, well, we already played around with glyphs, so you know how to get there. I'm not sure what this thing is doing. Okay. Uh, what else was I going to show you? Okay, we've already done the shapes, the glyphs. Oh, yes, the vector design. Now, let me see. I need to locate that vector that I worked with. Oh, I want to work with uh, this basic shape. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've got myself the little square, I mean this long rectangle. I'm duplicating it. Oops, that didn't work. How do you duplicate it? You hold on. Your alt key. Hold on your option key and then drag it out. I'm going to align them at the top. I'm going to get rid of the center one. Select the two. OK, now I'm looking for my blend tool. OK, I brought up my blend options here. I've got the two. And I'm going to select specific steps. So there's. Okay, now, right now they're too tight. They're all connected, so I'm going to have to go into Object, Expand, Object, Ungroup. What does Expand do? Create. Yeah, it, belong, it becomes a compound shape. And because of that. Okay, so I've got the, I've, I moved one, one of them slightly. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to align them so they're equal. Okay, you see that? Okay. 
Now I'm going to select this, each individual one and go for color. Okay, now. Oops, that's not what I want. Okay, got the red. Oh, make sure I've got the the fill selected. Oops. You, as you can see, I'm going for a rainbow kind of effect. Uh, what would be, well, it would be this. So green and blue. Let me open up my other one. Huh? Red, orange, green. No, no, no. Uh, let me open up my original. Spent a lot of time finding the colors in this one. Okay. So I just did fast what I was trying to do on the other one. Okay. So I've got them all selected now. I've got the colors a lot. Got them all selected. I'm going to go into effects. You see how you can affect the design? OK, now I'm using just warp right here. I'm just using the arc. I can switch that to an arch. Well, maybe I should cancel it. Effect, warp, shell. Okay, play with all those different effects. All these, you can make it a flag, you can make it wave, you can make it a fish. It's a real weird looking fish. Uh, yeah, that's why. Effect, warp. And then it's got all these versions of the warp that you can create. OK? So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And I'm going to expand the appearance and reduce. I'm going to group it, and I'm going to give it a, a drop shadow. I'm 
make this 100%. Let me come in closer so we can see better. Can you see that shadow I created? Okay. So you can see, this is how I got these effects, twisting it around, and then bringing it into Photoshop to give it a whole bunch of different effects. OK, and I did the same thing uh, with just plain old text. I uh, created the text and made it into an outline, brought the text into Photoshop, Okay. In the tendrils. And the look, this looks beautiful when Okay, now I was going to play with uh, I don't remember where I left my vector. I want to show you this. Uh, this was a, using the, the same technique, scanned a, a pen and drawing like a good. Um, yeah, now I don't have something to place. Was the pen and ink drawing scanned? Yeah, the pen and ink drawing was scanned. So, is there an advantage to using the No, I mean, they're equally, the, the only difference is that Illustrator gives you many more choices. Uh, as you can see, if I go into uh, swatches and then I pull down my swatches menu, I've got a swatch uh, 
choices to choose from. Okay, for beverage colors. I see, you can see vegetables, brights. Different color harmony gradients. Tones. If you go into metals, your Okay, uh, let me close this up. Get rid of this. Well, I'm just going to apply it to a new one. Okay, I've got the shape. This is gradient that I applied here. And of course, if you want to control the gradient even more, you click on the gradient tool, and it gives you this, this control. Go back to the swatches or the gradients pin on there. What's one of the watcher patterns? Uh, that, that, those were those weird patterns I was working with. Okay. Are those part of Photoshop? Yeah, those, those, were, those are. No, they're not. That's what I mean by. Okay, now here, another way to control. Um, Uh, I'll do that in a minute. Okay. Okay. Here's the. I'm gonna see how you notice. There's two gradient tools. There's one here, and there's one here. Now this one here allows me to change from a linear gradient to a radial, and it it allows me to reverse the gradient. Same thing with linear. You see that? That's very helpful. OK, now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change that gradient to white, or gray, because I used uh, Shape Builder. So now I'm going to go to the patterns. Remember these patterns? And how you could control, you can you can uh, flip through the menu until you get to one you want to work with. Let's say I have zebra. There it is. Now the cool thing about this. That's what the monster was. Uh, yeah, that's that was the monster patterns. Which was a right? You go into uh, swatches. Mm -hmm. You pull down the menu. You see how it's down here. Okay. You go to patterns. You got your basic graph textures. Here it is, and you can. Flip through the menu until you get to one you like. Okay? Now, I'm pretty sure you're here. The cool thing about this right here is I've got this pattern shape. I'm going to go to Object, Expand. Object, ungroup. Now each one. Hmm. It's not letting me do what I thought I would do. 
No. I think it's, it is only picking up a section of the pattern. No, it's not working. It doesn't work with patterns. What are you trying to do? I was trying to go in there and select the on a grid. I did that. It just changed the whole. Uh, Oh, this one here? Yeah. Let's try that. It only selects a portion. You see? What you can do, select one of the black items and go to the select menu and go to the select menu. I see you select all the same. Same fill color, yeah. There, there, there they are. Okay, but look what it did to the back. It works. Yeah, it worked. See there, there. Uh, let's try that again. Let me get rid of the whole thing, and we'll start again so you can see what we did. I'll get rid of the mistakes. Okay. I'm going to go with a star tool. <clears throat> I'm going to go to patterns. Okay. I'm going to go to object, expand, okay, object, it, it releases, okay, uh, object, ungroup, Okay, selecting using the different the direct select select tool. I go in there and I pick up. Hmm, maybe I should exp maybe sh I should ungroup it again. Ungroup it again. Select. Go into select. Save. Fill color. Now let's see if it works. Yes, it worked. Can you see how you could do that? You could change the color of your pattern. By doing I, when I went. When I went to select and I, I chose same color, that all the ones that the fill is the same. Okay, so those little squiggles are actually transparent going to the background. Is that right? Uh, let's find out. Let me, first, I'm trying to get rid of this thing here. Oh, just here you go. Earlier, you were picking out choosing the blue color. Yeah, I don't know why this won't go down. Oh, that's okay. I don't, uh, just click on the Illustrator. So, just, uh, let me find it. Okay. Uh, minimize or just pull it way down to the bottom right corner. Now, now, now we'll be currently sharing. Uh, that little window at Adobe Connect. Just drag that. Uh, this one here? Uh, now, just click on the top title. 
Да. None of them are working. I'm going to stop sharing. Well, I'm almost to the end. Not working. None of them are working. Not even stop sharing is working. <laughs>